Okay, so this is a very important section that we're about to get into because I'm going to ask you to do something that is so important to me that the process is more important than the answer, which sounds a little bizarre, but you'll understand as we go through this. You're going to be doing some problems that you may be able to do in your head, and I don't care. I am more concerned that you get a process for simple problems down before we get to the complex versions. So let's, let's take a look at what we got here. All right? So this is called the conversion method, or I like to call it the Campbell conversion method because this is going to simplify your life when we get to the more difficult problems. Um, let's take a problem that many of you think is very easy. Uh, how many centimeters are in five meters? In the past, you would probably think to, uh, all you have to do is multiply five by 100 and we get 500 centimeters. But why? Why do you do that? Well, because you have to remember, well, this is bigger than that, and then, and then I multiply when this number's there, and I divide when I have this number here. It, it, it gets garbled, and it lends you to the possibility that you're going to make a dumb mistake. We're going to eliminate all the dumb mistakes as much as we can, and the rest will be up to you. But it's going to be up to you to know the SI uh, prefixes and what they mean. That is the key to solving these problems. And it doesn't make a difference if you do it in your head or not. You have to do that anyway. So here's how that works. Okay, so the problem we're looking at is this. So let's, let's do this on the next page here. The problem is five meters is equal to how many centimeters? That's really the question. And when we do this problem, we start with what we're given here. And instead of putting an equal sign, we put a time sign. And then we're going to convert this so that we get rid of the meters and end up with centimeters. And we treat this like a multiplication of fraction problem in terms of the labels first and then the numbers. We don't even consider numbers until we get the labels fixed. And what I mean by that is this. We have meters in the numerator of a whole number, which means the denominator is one. We just don't write it that way. But this is in the numerator. And to get rid of the meters that we end up with centimeters, we have to put it in the denominator over here so that they will cancel out. That means then we can put it in the centimeters on top. Now, how does that really affect what's going to happen? Well, what we are doing is not changing the measurement. The measurement itself is the length of five meters. What's changing is the units that we're using to measure that length. And that, that unit is considered to be centimeters, but it's still five meters, six laid end to end. So that means we can't change the value of this number. And what number do you multiply by another number to keep that number the same? And the answer is one. So these two values of the fraction has to give us a value of one. And when that happens, they have to be equal to each other. So. This is what we do. The first question we ask ourselves is which is the larger label of the two that we are dealing with in that fraction? The answer is M, meters. Why? Because this is a lowercase c, which means that it is small compared to the base meter. So the larger label will always get the value of 1. So we put a 1 by the meter. The prefix centi means 100. 100 cents of the dollar, 100 years of century, blah, 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 blah. So we put 100 right there. And this is why we multiply. We ignore the one because when you multiply or divide by one, you get the same thing. So we're just going to ignore the one. We're just going to take 5 times, and it's times 100 because the 100 is in the numerator. Had that 100 been down here, we would be dividing. But this is on top, so they're both two numerators together. Multiplying gives us 500 centimeters. Now, I know this sounds a bit crazy, especially if you already knew the answer, but I'm telling you, I want it done this way, and this way only. I can't emphasize that enough. OK? So now let's take a look at, um, well, we did that already. So we, we talked about that. So why do I want you to do these conversion problems this way? Because we are going to begin with multi-step, in other words, many fractions being multiplied together, and multi-level conversions. We're going to convert both numerators and denominators all the way across. 
That's not so easy to do when you don't have a system down. This system will save you. Okay, so don't fight me on this. Some of you will, it's just human nature, you know, but you're not, you're gonna lose. Simple as that. I am looking for process, no process. If you don't write the process, it means no credit for the work done. So if you do a quiz and just give me an answer, I'm not even gonna consider it. And I wanna show you how to do it right. Because you already do, you just didn't wanna do it. So let's take a look at this example here. How many kilograms are in 3,250 grams? Let's do that one. Okay? So we have 3,250 grams equals blank kilograms. That's our example here. So, again, we write this down, 3,250 grams. And then instead of an equal sign, we put a time sign. And then we put a fraction line. And we're going to change the gram to kilogram. So the gram is in the numerator here. You're going to put the gram in the denominator there. They will now cancel out. That means we're going to put the kilogram up here. So the next question is, which is the larger label? Now, you don't have to write that out. I'm just doing this for teacher emphasis. Anyway, so which is the larger label? Well, in this case, we got a capital K. Now, capital K means it's larger than the base uh, unit, the base unit being gram. So capital K means big, I'm going to kill you. Ooh. So we put a one by the kilogram, but we still use the kilo to figure out the number that goes down here, because that's the only one that has a prefix in it. And if you remember from your SI chart, that K, capital K, means a thousand. So put a thousand down here. Now again, we ignore that one, we do the math. So you see you got a number in the numerator, a number in the denominator. You now divide 3,250 by a thousand. If you want to use your calculator, go ahead. No. Goodness, you don't know how to do a decimal point. One, two, three. The answer is 3.25 kilograms. It is that easy. And it will simplify those bigger and more complex problems when we get to them, which we will. I promise. Okay? So, how many inches are in 6.5 feet is the next example. It's the same kind of problem we now we're dealing with those wonderful English units that I love and adore so much. So 6.5 feet equals how many inches? All right, well, check it out. 6.5 feet equals how many inches? So again, we write down 6.5 feet times, fraction line, put feet on the bottom. Makes sense, doesn't it, feet are on the, the bottom, never mind. I guess you need soul to figure that joke out. See, feet, bottoms, soul, okay. And we put inches on top, feet cancel out, so we'll call you study. And uh, now, this is, this is another reason why I just absolutely despise the English system because the, the SI system makes it really easy to figure out with capital prefixes and lowercase prefixes, which is the larger label, and the meaning is the same no matter what, and they're all powers of 10. Oh, I love the metric slash SI system. I hate the English system. You have to remember that one foot is equal to 12 inches. Why do I make you know the, the English system that it's so horrible? Because we love our English system. We are afraid to get rid of it. Don't, don't, don't remove our English system. I love it so much. I'll be lost without it. Whatever. Multiply 6.5 times 12. 78 inches is our answer. So you got to know these English systems. Measurements. I expect you to know it. If we are going to keep this nonsense system, you're going to have to know how to use your nonsense system. So, your practice problems, right here, and that's um, 
please note that this is going to be, I'll fix this before you get it, but it's, number one is 250 microseconds, number two is 6.25 gallons, blah, blah, blah. But I'll get that fixed so it isn't so confusing. 